Alright, now this is it. Horses. Young men come riding up the trail on horses. And then they are men of a hundred years ago, riding some trail a thousand miles to the west. Horses say western, more than a hundred cowboy hats, more than six hundred six-shooters. Principal photography had been completed on Whiplash 2 before the horses ever appeared over the crest of the hill at Tyler Park to ride into the film. 6,000 feet of film had been run through the sound motion picture cameras. Eight weeks of shooting, including location photography in the Poconos. But the schedule had been too tight, moving too many young filmmakers through too many sets to have included the horses at that stage. So here was the crew a week later. The costumes were put on one last time. The makeup was recreated, and the horses were brought in. Oh God, the thing was terrible. It was for me. It was great. Well, yeah, but you, you know, you had a little time to get used to. It. I was told, get on, walk it. I would do that. I'd never been on a horse before in my life. Horseback riding is not a native skill to humans. It must be learned. But it's an important part of acting in a western to make it look natural, make it look as if the character has ridden all his life. Look at the camera now. Ready? Look, look up. Camera. See? No, I don't go back. Of course, for the harder shots, a director can always call in a stunt double. Here, actor Frank Smith lends the shirt off his back, along with his hat and holster, to a young man with much more riding experience. Well, that's because he's wearing somebody else's clothes who is, is in the movie. That's why he looks like a stunt. Could be a very good You get the impression in your mind because he's supposed to be Frank, but he, he kind of looks like a movie. And he's doing something Frank. So. These horse sequences were shot by what is called a skeleton crew, meaning that the usual complement of movie technicians is pared down to the minimum. This allows the crew to travel light and fast, but it also means that each kid works harder and longer than usual. On this day, though, the young skeleton crew worked as efficiently and quickly as larger crews usually do. Some scenes, though, require a skeleton crew simply because all of the technicians who double as actors have been put in costume and makeup and placed in front of the cameras. Such was the case when the Syndicate film team went to Rocky Glen Park in the Poconos to use Rocky Glen's Ghost Town as the set for the finale of Whiplash 2. The dramatic climax was to be set off by the eerie stillness of the empty town, but the crew had to battle sirens from the amusement park and planes passing overhead. Syndicate had been granted permission to use the ghost town until the park opened for the day, giving the young filmmakers three hours to complete their filming. That's normally enough time, but the unwanted noises delayed things as the minutes ticked maddeningly away. Finally, the sound crew resorted to acoustical tricks and off-camera dialogue, bringing the talent close enough to the mic to reduce the obtrusive sounds as much as possible. In the more controlled environment of the Cinecade Studios back home in Willow Grove, the main challenge is finding places to build sets. Most of the sets for Whiplash 2 were used for more than one scene and on more than one shooting day. 
So the sets and props crew had to either build the set somewhere where it could be left standing, or construct a set that could be torn down and then easily recreated at a later time. In the case of this set, which was to be the back of the cantina, they painted some scrap wood for a rustic look and brought in a barrel and several bales of hay. This would have been easy enough to redo, except that on the day scheduled for rebuilding this outdoor set, the forecast called for rain. So the set was moved indoors, lock, stock, and barrel, not to mention hay. The trick was to light it as if it were daylight. Comparing rushes from the two different shooting days, we see that the young filmmakers were quite successful in pulling off the illusion. What happens in the scene behind the cantina is that Rosita, who tries her best to keep the place running despite her uncooperative employees, is met by a man from the past, a man everyone thought had been killed two years before, an evil figure in black whom the whole town had hoped they were rid of as visitors from WPVI-TV's primetime rolled their own cameras, the syndicate cameras captured the dramatic return of El Diablo.